Are you ready to take on the challenge? Today, I'm diving into the latest color throwdown challenge, number 807, where it's all about light blue, cream, and craft. Watch as I turn these subtle hues into a stunning card design that'll inspire your next crafting session. Hey everyone, it's Lean from ColoradoLean.com. Welcome back to the craft room. So for today's project, I'm gonna be working with a limited number of craft supplies. I think sometimes that makes crafting a whole lot easier to, to deal with. Let's start by talking about our card stock. This is all Recollections card. For the card base and the card front, I will be working with a cream color from the Coffee and Cream paper pack. This is 110. I will be die cutting some flowers from white 65 pound card and I have a 65 pound card craft that I will be using for the card mat. For the flowers, I will be using my Heartfelt Creations Oakberry Lane Blossoms die set. This also came with a stamp set, but I won't be using that for today's project. I will be coloring my flowers with Copic markers. I'll be using B12 and B14. It is a light and a medium light blue. I will also be shaping the flowers with my McGill flower shaping kit. For the adhesive, I'll need art glitter glue for the flowers and score tape for the card itself. For the sentiment, I know this is going to be a birthday card, um, I'm undecided which sentiment I'm actually going to use, so I'll get back with you on that later. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, I have all of my flowers cut with my Sizzix Big Shot, as well as the scrapbook.com magic mat. So let's go ahead and get these popped out of here. And then we will start doing our coloring. So I'm only going to color one of each size for you today. I won't make you sit through all of that. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and start with the B12 Copic marker. Um, that is called Ice Blue. So I'm just going to cover the entire petal and I'm not worried about my or about any lines that may show up on here that will just add texture to the finished flower so this can just be a really quick color for you Now this small petal, that is just going to get this one color. I'm not going to put the other color on there, so that one will be done. Um, next I'm going to use B14. That is called light blue. And I'm just going to do a flicking technique. So I'm just going to put my the brush nib down and then just flick it up. I'm going to try and go at least halfway up the petal on the large and just a little bit less on the medium size. So there'll be something like that and I hope that's in frame. Okay, and there is our coloring. So I'm going to go ahead and also show you real quick how I shape these different petals. Um, and then I will go off screen and I will 
finish coloring all of them and shaping the rest of them. So I'm going to be using my McGill flower shaping kit. Um, I will be using the 6mm and 2mm stylist. And let's go ahead and start with the large petal. So I'm going to flip it over to the back side and with the 6mm side I'm just going to go over the entire petal. And I'm not holding it down with my other hand. I just want to let it let it move as it will. And what I'm doing here is I'm just loosening the paper fibers. So we'll just get this last petal. And then I'm going to flip it over and I'm just going to lightly go around the center. Now I don't want this to cup up the other direction because this will be going in the mail. So I want a little bit of texture, but not a huge amount of texture. So I'm just going to do the same thing to this medium size petal or the medium size layer, I guess I should say. Then flip that over and just go around. And now for the little one, I'm going to use the two millimeter end. And all I'm going to do is just go around the very tip of each of the petals. So I hope you can see what I did there. Um, I will definitely get some close-up pictures of this and put it on the corresponding blog post for you. And you'll be able to find that at coloradolean.com. Oops. All right, now I'll just flip it over and with the large six millimeter size, I will go ahead and press it. Now I'm pressing this one a little bit more because it will have to go in between these two layers and that's already going to be cupped up pretty well. So that is how I shaped the petals. So while we're here, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to put this one flower together. And I'm going to use my reverse tweezers from the McGill flower shaping kit. These things come in handy. And I'm going to get my art glitter glue. I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on the back side of this petal. And I'm only going in the center of the petal. Okay. And then I'm going to offset my all of my petals here. And then I will just push it down with my stylist. All right. And now we'll do the same thing for our small petal. Just a little bit of glue in the center. And then I will offset the petals and just poke that down with the stylist. I'm going to go ahead and jump off screen and color up the rest of these. Um, for the petal combinations, I'm going to have maybe one more of the large. And then I will have a medium and small layer as a flower. And then... I will have just a couple of the small, smallest ones. So I will be back with you shortly. So all of our flowers are made and colored and we are ready for the next step. Um, I do want to mention that the die set did come with leaves. Um, I didn't initially cut them out, but I think I might need a few. So I cut those out of the craft color card. And I don't know who I was kidding. Of course, I'm going to use Kaiser Craft Occasions 
happy birthday stamp. I always do. It's my go-to. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let's see. I want to put my score tape on the back of this first. And then I'm going to stamp my sentiment. And then I am going to line this up. Well, no, I, I guess I will. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do. It's kind of a free for all at the moment. But definitely I want to make sure I get my score tape on here and I want to get the sentiment stamped so that I don't have to worry about that once I get my flowers on. Okay, so we will leave that alone for now. And again, I am using my well-loved and falling apart Misty. And I'm going to put the happy birthday up here. All right, so I have my stamp ready. And I'm going to use archival ink, forget me not, blue ink. I'll give this a try, see what that looks like. I keep forgetting that I have these little archival inks. I need to uh, put a note somewhere on my desk so I can get them out and use them more often. That's pretty. That's kind of pretty. I think I like that. What do you think? I'm going to go ahead and build this layer real quick. Okay, now that I have that layer built, let's go ahead and put our flowers together. So I'm going to start with a leaf right there. And put a big flower there. I'll put a medium flower there. Maybe another leaf there with a little baby flower up top. Let's see. Building the flower bouquets is really not easy for me. Um, I look at other people's cards and I'm like, wow, that's beautiful. How do you do that? <laughs> okay, well, let's just start with that. So again, I'm going to bring in my reverse tweezers. And I'm going to tuck this here in the corner. So, element number one. And then I will put a big flower. And again, I'm just putting the ink in the center. I'm not putting it behind any of these individual petals. That way, when it's pushed down, it will not adhere. It will keep its dimension. So, I will put that right there. That looks like a good start, doesn't it? Okay, now let's take this medium-sized petal. Put some glue on it. And then I will tuck that right, right there. And then I will just set that one there for a moment because we do need a leaf or two in here. Like 
that, maybe put this at the top. Yeah, let's do that. So now I can probably hear all of you guys out there who do a better job at this saying, no, no, don't do that, don't do that. Oh my gosh, don't do that. <laughs> Please, if you have any suggestions at all for a better way to build a bouquet on a flower, drop, your, drop those comments for me down below because <laughs> I need all the help I can get. And then we'll cover up that glue spot right there. All right, now we need another little medium-sized flower down here. We'll tuck that in right there. And I think I'll do the same thing here. I'll tuck a leaf cluster and then a little little baby flower at the end. And then that will give me an odd number of flowers. I'll lift that petal up a little bit. Pop that down and then add our little baby flower. And I'll just put that one right there. Now I have two more leaves. I could tuck them together here. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut them apart. And I will put one of them in here. So I'll go ahead and do that. So I'll tuck him in there. And let's see, this is kind of empty. Okay, so I think for now I'm going to go ahead and leave this to dry. And I will do a little bit of thinking in the process and figure out what to do over here. So I will be back with you shortly. So I went through all of my stamp sets and I found this one from the Ton Stamps. It is Sweet Folk Hummingbird. And there is just a tiny little saying, have a sweet day. And I think that would fit perfectly on this card. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring my Mini Misty back in. And because I have stuff hanging off the edge we're going to have to turn this upside down and work so that will be interesting so i need to make sure this is going upside down well maybe i'll turn it around for now just so i don't get confused so have a sweet day And those flowers are going to get smashed a little bit. But that's all right. They will be going in the mail, so they will be smashed there as well. I'm just going to have to be really careful. So again, I am using the Ranger Archival Ink forget me not yeah there we go that is just adorable there okay and again i will have um close-up pictures for you on the blog post. Okay, so now we just have to put our 
card front onto our card base. And if you'll recall, the card base is 110 pound cream color card from the coffee and cream packet from Recollections. And now I will just take the backing off the tape. And I will get this lined up. And there's our finish card. I think that turned out really pretty. All right, here is our finished card. Thank you so much for joining me for today's Throwdown Color Challenge card. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you know when I put up the next video. Until then, have a great day. Bye.